Let's start by navigating to GitHub. Once we are there, we're gonna go ahead and sign in. I'm gonna go ahead and enter here a username of peterparker.data.gmail.com. Then I'm going to enter a password and I'm going to sign in. This is a clean account. There are no repositories. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the first one. I'll go ahead and select there the option for that. Since this is our very first one, I'm simply going to say hello. I'll say here, hello, uh, repo. I'm gonna make it a public repository. I'm gonna go ahead and add a readme, a git ignore. I'm going to select here from the pull down the node option. This is one that we will use a few times. And then I'm going to choose a license. For a license, I want the MIT license. Let me go ahead and select that. And once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and create my repository. Now, as you can see there, this is brand new. Uh, we are ready to go. And now let's go ahead and install the next thing that we need. The next thing that we need is the Git installer. So I'm gonna go ahead and search on Google for that. As you can see here, I am directed to Git and then the download for the Mac, which is what I want in this case. As you can see, there are a bunch of different options. I'm gonna go ahead and select the one for the binary installer, and I'm gonna go ahead and start that download. Now, that one, once that completes, uh, you will have a DMG, as you can see here. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on it. Depending on the type of download that you did, you might have a number of confirmations and passwords you need to enter. If you do get denied and you can't install it, you can navigate to security and privacy. And usually here, there's an option to allow you to install even if the operating system doesn't like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here the installer. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the default options. I am prompted there for a password. This is the password of your machine, the one that you enter to be able to get access to your laptop or desktop. I'm gonna go ahead here and enter the one for my machine. And as you can see there, that is finishing the installation. Once this is done, we can go ahead and delete it. We no longer need that installer. I'm gonna go ahead and eject it, meaning I will no longer need it. Now, once we install that, we need to give the installation a little bit more information. And that information has to do with the username that we are going to be using for GitHub and the also the user the user's email. So the very first line is the username, as you can see there, git config dash dash global, then user.name, then within double quotes, Peter Parker data. So that's the first option. Then the second one that I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and paste it here. And once again, you can see there, the very first terms are the same, then user.email, then the user we use, which was peterparker.data at gmail.com. So now that I've done that, I can go ahead and close my terminal and open up Visual Studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the browser bring Visual Studio here onto, onto the desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead here and select the option to clone repository. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to access that, that repository that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And as you can see here, I get the option to clone from GitHub. And it's asking me if I want to sign in using GitHub, I will say yes. Well, actually, let me go ahead and open up uh, GitHub. I'm still logged in here. You should be able to use the same credentials. I'm gonna go ahead and say allow. And as you can see there, it is asking me to authorize. I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. And then it'll ask you to confirm that loop by going back to Visual Studio Code. As you can see there, it is carrying on those credentials. And once it's, finishing, it's finished with that loop, you can see there that I get the option to be able to open that first repository that we created. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. 
And you, as you can see here, it is asking me where I want to put it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the desktop in this case. I'm gonna select the repository location and it's asking me whether I want to open this clone repository. I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, open. And as you can see here, we have the files that we added, the, read, the readme, the license, and there's a get ignore there that uh, we'll come back to uh, in lecture. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a file. I will simply call it index.html. Inside of it, I'm simply going to write hello world. And that's all I'm going to add. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. I'll close that other one as well. And I'll move here to the source control section. And as you can see there, it is tracking one change. I'm gonna go ahead and enter a commit to be able to commit those changes. And I will simply make a note there by saying first commit. Once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and commit them. Once I am done with that, I'm going to go ahead and push those changes up. As you can see here, that is an option. And now that is propagating out onto GitHub. So we have those changes here locally. If I open the directory, you can see there that I have the new file index.html. And it is also asking me an option here of whether I want to uh, periodically fetch changes. And that is more useful when you are working in a team. In this case, we're simply doing a small demo. So I'm going to say no in this case, and we're gonna go ahead and navigate here back to Peter Parker. And as you can see there, that is the initial creation of the repo six minutes ago. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reload this. And as you can see there, we have one file that is more recent, which is index.html. When I click on it, you can see there the contents of Hello World. So as you can see there, we went full circle. We started out in GitHub, then we did the installation of Git. We then opened uh, a, that repository on GitHub, and we were able to connect back out, sync our permissions, and add some more content and sync it back up to the cloud. So now it's your turn.